Hi, in this video we're going to be looking at vertical motion. So this is throwing things up, dropping things. Okay, no sideways motion because that would be projectiles that comes later on in the, in the course. So just up and down direction and working with your equations of motion again. So there's your four equations of motion if you want to jot them down as a reminder. The big difference between what you're doing today and what you did before with the equations of motion is that for something free falling through the air on Earth, the acceleration is always going to be 9.8 meters per second squared. So you'll always know the acceleration. Okay? So A is 9.8 meters per second squared or sometimes it will be minus 9.8 meters per second squared that's all to do with the direction that you're calling positive we'll see a bit more about that later on so that actually makes things easier because there's one of your five variables um, fixed for all questions now what's worth writing down and really thinking about when you're doing these questions is which direction positive and negative are going to be. If I'm stood on top of a bridge and I'm dropping something and timing how long it takes to get to the bottom, although you'd think that down is negative, if you do that then all of your equations are going to have minuses in and it's going to make things really awkward. So if there's only one direction of motion which is down, you're probably better off just calling it positive, but sort of knowing that it is actually downwards that you figure it out. You don't want to end up with minus times and minus velocities when really velocity is, so you just want to know how fast it's going. So try and make life easy for yourself. If you're throwing something up and letting it come back down, so for part of the problem it's going up and part of the problem it's coming back down so if you do that then if you pick positive as up then when it comes back down that's going to be negative or vice versa if you take positive as down then negative is going to be up what you might find easier is to break the whole thing into two separate questions so that you can for the first part call up positive do all your workings out and find out everything there is to know and then on the way back down start again and call down positive. It just helps to keep your numbers positive in the question rather than you doing something daft with your minuses. Okay, and then only one more thing to put here, and that's because we're using what's called the particle model, we assume air resistance and we assume that the mass and the shape of the object have no impact on the mass. Okay, whereas realistically if I dropped a ball of mass 50 grams and a piece of paper of mass 50 grams, the ball is going to get to the ground first because there's more air resistance on the sheet of paper and it's going to sort of flap down and go all over the place. So everything here is treated as a particle of infinitely small size and mass and therefore the acceleration downwards is always going to be 9.8. There's no air resistance, there's nothing stopping it. Okay. Right, so let's have a go at some just simple questions to start with then. So these are just like working one direction, up or down, not both. So I drop a ball from a height of 1.4 metres, calculate its velocity when it hits the floor and the time it takes to fall. So if we list our variables, so we've got S, U, V, A and T. So we know S because the ball is dropping 1.4 metres. We know U because when the ball is in our hand its initial velocity is zero. And we know A. Now you can put 9.8 or minus 9.8. Since we're only going down I'm going to say 9.8 and therefore down is positive in my workings. Okay, not that it really matters because we're not going to come back up anyway. But we'll get um, a positive velocity and we'll get a positive time. So now we've got to calculate V and T. Okay, 
So I probably, if I'm going to do v first, I can use v squared equals u squared plus 2as. Okay, the only equation of motion that doesn't involve time. So that's 0 squared, so that's easy enough. So that disappears. So all we've got is 2 times 9.8 times 1.4. So that's 19.6 times 1.4, which is 27.44. So v squared is 27.44. And if we square root that, then v is 5.24. And we work to three significant figures on our final answers. Okay, and then if I want to find uh, t now, then so if I put 5.24 in there, I can now use v equals u plus a t. So 5.24. Remember u was zero, so that's just 9.8 t. So 5.24, this is the problem here. Like if we start putting minuses in, they both have to be minus, otherwise we'll get a minus time. So 5.24 divided by 9.8 is 0.535 seconds. So three significant figures, that is. Okay, which in this case is three decimal places. So not too bad. Let's have a look at the next one. Maybe you can pause the video to write these down if I'm going a bit too quick. This time I drop a pebble off a cliff. The stone takes, or pebble I should say, takes 2.2 seconds to hit the floor. How high are the cliffs? So, as usual, we'll write down what we know. So, t is 2.2. Now, the others are obviously are now implied. So, u is 0 because we dropped it. And again, A is 9.8, and I'm taking down as positive again. We've got to work out S. So we've got U, A, and T. Probably the easiest one to use then is S equals U, T plus a half A, T squared. Okay. U is 0, so that just goes. So S is a half times 9.8 times 2.2 squared, type in these in as I go along, 23.7 metres to three significant figures. You could have found V equals U plus AT and then used V to find S, but the more equations you use, uh, the more rounding you're going to do and the less accurate you'll be. So try and do it in one equation if you can. And then the last one for this little set of intro questions, I give a stone downwards velocity of 1.5 meters per second. So not, not just opening our hand and letting it go this time, actually throwing it downwards. Uh, the bridge is eight meters high. How long does the stone take to hit the water and what is its velocity on impact? So S, U, V, A, and T. So S is eight meters. U this time is 1.5, and I call in down positive, so even though I've thrown it down, it's still positive 1.5. A is 9.8, and that's downwards, so that's also positive. And we're going to find T and V. So we got U, A, and S. So I think I'll start with V squared equals U squared plus 2 A, S again, because I'm missing T at the minute. This time we do have a u, so 1.5 squared plus 2 times 9.8 times 8. So 1.5 squared plus 2 times 9.8 times 8. So v squared is 159.05. And if we square root that, 12.6 meters per second. 12.61 if you want to be accurate about it. Okay, so let's fill that in. And then to find t, well now we can use v equals u plus at. So 12.6 equals 1.5 plus 9.8t. This time we will have to take away the 1.5 first. So 12.6 take away 1.5. It's 11.1, so 11.1 equals 9.8t, so if we divide by 9.8 now then, 
1.13 seconds. Let's tidy that up a bit. So 1.13 seconds, which obviously it would have taken longer if we hadn't thrown it down. Because of the 1.5 initial velocity, it didn't take as long to get to the floor or to the river, water, whatever we're throwing it into. Okay, so that's problems where the object only goes one direction and, and down. Now, if we were in class, I'd be stood in front of you throwing a ball in here and asking you to describe what's going on. So here's somebody who doesn't look anything like me, throwing a ball up in the air, and we're going to look at what's happening at each stage. So in this first picture, the ball has just been thrown. It's left the boy's hand, so it's got upwards velocity of u. Okay. Which way is it accelerating? Hopefully downwards, because acceleration is always down. So that means, now acceleration, remember, is a double arrow. Acceleration is downwards. So if you're going to say that u is 6, then that means that a must be minus 9.8, because they're in opposite directions. Or if you say that a is 9.8, then u would have to be minus 6. But whatever you, whatever sign you give to one, you need to give the opposite side to the other. Okay? And that's always going to be 9.8. So if I put here 9.8. So if my arrows are down, I'll put 9.8. I could draw it as arrows up and put minus 9.8, which is, I don't know, whatever you think is easier really okay but when we do our workings it's going to go in as a minus now here the ball is not at max height so it's got a velocity of v okay it's not going as quickly as it was it's decelerated and the acceleration is still downwards at 9.8 now that's never going to change even when we get to the top. So this is the maximum height. Now max height is really important in these problems because something really important happens when you reach the maximum height. And that is that V equals zero. So there is a very, very brief moment in time where the ball is stationary. It's lost all of the initial velocity we gave it but that doesn't mean that it's not still under the effect of gravity, so it's still accelerating downwards. And, and I know that because if it was not experiencing gravity anymore, the ball would stay up there, stationary, floating in the air. But because it immediately or almost immediately starts to come back down, then it must still be experiencing gravity even when it's actually stationary for that tiny, tiny fr uh, fraction of a second. Okay, then the ball comes back down again. So at this point, the velocity is downwards. And an interesting little thing happens here. When you're ignoring air resistance, because the ball has returned to the same height that it was initially, v is actually equal to what u was but in the opposite direction so if i threw it up with an initial speed of six meters per second then when it comes back down past my hand it's going minus six meters per second okay it's coming back down and it's accelerating in that direction as well so what you might want to say now after when you get to this point here is that afterwards, because the motion is downwards and the acceleration is downwards, we may as well call down positive. Whereas maybe over here, it makes more sense for up to be positive and then and end of A is minus 9.8. Whereas here, A is now positive 9.8. And the way I think of it is, is to say, is the acceleration working with the velocity or against it? When you throw the ball up, the acceleration is working against the velocity you gave it. But when you're coming back down, the acceleration is working with in the same direction. 
Then obviously we get down here, we hit the floor. So this is just before we hit the floor. So V isn't zero, it's not resting on the floor. This is like that tiny microsecond before we hit the floor where V is actually at the maximum it's gonna be. So this is the fastest the ball has been traveling for this whole thing. So it had positive six, then maybe positive three. Eventually we got to V was zero. Then it started coming back down and V was minus six or six again if you swapped your directions. Now V is something bigger than six and it's still accelerating downwards. The one constant in all of this is the acceleration of 9.8 and we hit the floor. But this 9.8, a lot of people think that when you get the maximum height, gravity stops working. It doesn't. V equals zero, but you're still accelerating. And we can graph this now then. So if you want to pause the video and scribble this down, and then when you're ready, we'll draw the graphs. Okay. So first decision you've got to make is what is zero is zero where the ball started from or is zero the ground if zero is the ground then the ball started with some height already this is a displacement time graph measuring the distance so if zero is the ground you get a shape like that hopefully symmetrical so i'll redraw that because it should be sort of like a minus x squared curve that's better so this is the initial height that it was thrown from so when it was in the boy's hand and then this is the ground so this is if the ground equals zero if you'd prefer to say well where it started from is zero you get the same shape but it goes like that. So why has it gone negative? Because it's finished lower than what it started. So it's got negative displacement. Now, neither of those graphs is wrong. You just need to be clear with what is your zero. Okay. I think it makes more sense to put it there and measure from the ground because the ground is obviously a fixed position. So what we've got then, a few points here. When it reached the maximum height, so if I say T and then max height, okay, and it's a curve because initially it had a lot of velocity, so its height changed quickly, but as it lost its velocity, we're starting to flatten off, okay. When we get to the top there, this was when v equals zero, so that's why the graph is flat. Remember, velocity is the gradient on this graph. So at the very top, v equals zero, the graph is flat. And then we start to pick up some negative velocity on the way back down. And I should be getting steeper, so I should really make that a bit steeper. I had a good one the first time I drew it. And then the biggest gradient is here. Look, remember we said that this is the maximum velocity was just before it hit the floor and you can see that the graph is the steepest at that point. Right now if we do a velocity time graph this is much easier to draw. So if we put a few points in here's our initial velocity u and we're going to say that's positive. Then we said when it gets to the when it gets to its maximum height v was zero so there's a point on our graph and then when it hits the floor we said it's traveling at its fastest but negative compared to what we were to start with so maybe now we're down here so this is v max now obviously it's negative because of the directions i've got here but this now is a straight line should be i'll move a few dots around now and it's a straight line for one really important reason. The gradient on this graph is the acceleration. So the gradient equals the acceleration on a velocity time graph. And the acceleration is fixed. So 
So the gradient for this whole graph is minus 9.8. And that's why you get a straight line graph. Because it loses its velocity at a rate of 9.8 meters per second every second. The gradient is fixed. So it's a straight line graph. Okay, which confuses a few people. They think it should be curved. Okay, but my simple proof of why it's not a curve, on a velocity time graph, the gradient is the acceleration, and when you're working in the vertical direction, the acceleration is always minus 9.8, and so the graph must be a straight line. Okay, so let's have a look at a question then, with some numbers. I throw a ball from an initial height of 1.5 meters with an initial upward velocity of 10 meters per second squared, which sounds like a lot, but it doesn't last long. Calculate the maximum height of the ball, the time it takes to reach maximum height, the velocity of the ball when it hits the floor, and the total time the ball is airborne. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to divide the question into two parts, the upward section and the downward section when that stops mucking around with the size. I don't know where that's going. Right. Is that going to stop moving? Doesn't look like it. There we go. Okay. So if we do the upward section first. So when we're working up, and I'm going to call up positive because I'm not worrying about down at the minute. So you, we know. A we know and not a lot else so let's have a look so A is going to be minus 9.8 this time because I'm calling up positive and U is 10 now if I'm looking at up at the end of the up section is when we reach the maximum height and when we reach the maximum height remember V equals 0 a lot of, I've seen people forget this in the past and then I'll not, not know what to do because they haven't got enough variables. But when you get to the maximum height, V equals zero. So we can find S, which is the maximum height, and T, which is the time it takes to get there. So let's start with finding S. So V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. So V is zero. 10 squared plus 2a. Now remember a is minus 9.8 so 2a is minus 19.6 and so that's not actually a plus it's a minus. If you don't put it in as a minus this ball will never slow down and therefore never reach maximum height. What it will do is continue to accelerate upwards forever into space getting faster and faster. So that's what happens if you forget your minus. Right, rearranging this, 19.6s equals 100 from the 10 squared. All I've done is bring the 19.6s over. 100 divided by 19.6 is 5.10. So s equals 5.10 meters. So not that high, really. All right, it's about the height of the, the block that my room is in. So 5.10 zero and now we can find t as well so the easiest way to do this is v equals u plus a t so remember v is zero because at the end of the upward section the ball is stationary u is 10 and again you need a minus in here otherwise you'll never lose the 10 if i put a plus there this ball is just going to get faster and faster. I'm supposed to be losing velocity. Remember, gravity is working against us at this stage. So rearranging that. 10 divided by 9.8 is going to be just over 1, isn't it? 1.02 seconds. So 1.02. Right, let's rub out the workings. And now we'll work on the down section. When I've done all this, I'm going to try and graph this out with the numbers. Now we're going to down uh, on its own. I'm going to change now to saying that down is positive because I'm basically treating this now as a separate question. 
So I need to rewrite my variables. And what do we know? We always know A, but because now down is positive, A is positive. We're going to gain velocity on the way down. Gravity is working with the ball to make it go faster. So A is now positive 9.8. We're starting from the maximum height. So at maximum height, the ball has got no velocity. So we're starting with a U of zero. And we also know one other thing. We know S. Now don't forget that initially this ball was thrown from a height of 1.5 meters. We then worked out that it went a further 5.1 meters upwards. So altogether, the ball is 6.50 meters from the floor. That's how far we're going to drop. So if I graph it so far with a displacement time graph, we've started from 1.5 and we've gone to here, which is 6.6, sorry, not 6.5, isn't it? Okay, 6.6 meters. But now we're on the coming back down section, which is this. We need to fall 6.6 .6 meters to hit the floor, not 5.1 meters to hit the floor. 5.1 is if we were catching the ball again. Okay, we've got U, A, and S. So I'll start with this equation to find V. So V squared equals, so that's zero, so that helps. Two times 9.8 times 6.6, which is 129.36. And square root that is 11.4 work into three significant figures and down is positive so that makes sense it does have positive velocity because it is traveling downwards and the time so if we do v equals u plus a t probably the easiest way to do this so 11.4 equals u is nothing so 9.8 t so that's 11.4 divided by 9.8 is 1.16 seconds. Now remember, we already took 1.02 seconds getting to maximum height. So altogether, with the 1.16 seconds it's taken to land, we're now on 2.18 seconds. So that's actually this. The total time that it's in the air is 2.18 seconds. 1.02 seconds on the way up, 1.16 seconds on the way down. Remember, it's got further to travel on the way down, so it takes a little bit longer. Even though it's actually going faster when it hits the floor, it's still got further to go. So there's a displacement time graph. It's got all my measurements measured from the ground. So T, S, if I want to do a velocity time graph as well, now this is where we're going to have to be a little bit clever. Now, when I did my calculations, I swapped positive was up and then I started again went positive down. Because I'm putting the whole thing on one graph, now I'm going to have to have some negatives, okay? Because I want to do one graph for the whole problem. So I'll say that up is positive. So this is a velocity time graph. I'll mark on the key times. So 1.02 was max height. 2.18 is when the ball hit the floor. Initially, it had a velocity of positive 10 if up is positive. We know it's a straight line graph. So it goes like that. And we know that when it hit the floor, now we calculated 11.4. On this graph, I'll have to write minus 11.4. Because it is the opposite direction to the initial 10. So that's really, sometimes your workings and your graphs are not exactly matching 
because when we did our workings we treated as two separate questions and changed our mind about which way was positive on the graph because we're doing it all as one big graph it's got to be negative somewhere and there you go that is a fully defined problem now we know everything there is to know about the ball um, you can put any time in so if it said um, which direction was the ball traveling after 0.5 seconds well I can see from my graph that it was still on the way up at 0.5 seconds all you would do is a SUVAP calculation and put in that t is 0.5 okay but it helps to know that the ball was actually still on the way up if a question said um, at what point was the did the ball have a velocity of minus 4 well all you do is SUVAT and put V as minus 4 okay so it would be around here somewhere wouldn't it minus 4 and you could work out at what time that was so obviously on the way back down when V was minus 4 but you could work out um, how far off the ground it was you can basically do anything you like as long as you know whether it's on the way up or the way down at any given point and I would definitely at least to start with break these problems into up and down as separate questions and carry some numbers over from one to the other like when I went from 5.10 to 6.60